Hi, I'm Prof L, and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to talk about enthalpy uh, as part of a few videos indeed on thermodynamics. So what is enthalpy um, and how do we go about using enthalpy in uh, thermodynamic calculations? So enthalpy is a fancy name for heat, <laughs> quite simply. So enthalpy comes from the German word enthalen, meaning to contain. And um, this type of heat, which we call enthalpy, is merely the heat of a reaction measured under constant pressure conditions. So conditions of constant pressure like we have all around us um, when we're doing chemical reactions in beakers on a bench or something like that. So basically this applies to um, chemical reactions that are occurring under normal conditions, normal everyday conditions that we would use in the lab. Right, so the symbol for enthalpy is H. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is, enthalpy, and it's a very common uh, measurement, I guess, in thermodynamics. So let's have a look at the use of um, this idea of enthalpy in a one or two, in fact, thermodynamic calculations. Okay, so. Here we go, we are going to look at this reaction here. So we've got three carbons, and we're gonna have that reacting with four H2s, and that is going to give us C3H8 as a gas. Okay, and this is gonna be at 25 degrees Celsius, and what we want is we want to know what delta H for this particular reaction is, the enthalpy change, okay? And remember, delta, meaning finus, final, minus initial. So therefore, basically we're taking the enthalpy on this side and subtracting off the sums of the enthalpy on this side. That's, that's essentially what delta H means. It's the difference in heat between the two sides of your chemical equation. Okay, now we've given some data, or we're given some data to be able to figure this out. And the data comes in forms of thermochemical equations. And so the thermochemical equations that we are given, plus 5O2 gas, and that's a combustion reaction going to 3CO2 gas plus 4H2O liquid. And that's got a enthalpy change, delta RH standard, of minus 2220 kilojoules per mole. Um, so that's C3H8. The next equation that we're given is H2 gas plus a half O2 gas, and that is going to give us H2O liquid, and delta RH for that is equal to minus 285.8 kJ per mole. And the third one, CO2 gas plus, uh, whoops, plus nothing, <laughs> giving quite simply solid carbon plus O2 gas and delta RH standard for that is equal to 393.5 kJs per mole. Okay, so there's all the data that we've got. <clears throat> so how then do we figure out delta H for this equation from these equations here? And the answer is that we're going to have to manipulate these equations in some way, okay? What we want is for equations one, two, and three here to add up to give us this equation here. So this is a very, very sort of common type of uh, problem that you get in exams whereby you're given a series of equations that you have to then manipulate somehow in order that they add up to give you the equation that you want. There's the equation that we want at the top. Here are our three equations here. How are we gonna do this? Right, so the first thing to do is to look and see what side your components of your equations are on, okay? So we want carbon on the left-hand side of the arrow. So we look through these equations to find carbon. We find that it's here and it's on the wrong side. So therefore, we're going to have to reverse this equation. So let's write reverse this, and we're also gonna to have to multiply it by three 
because we've got three carbons here, we want three carbons here. So we're going to reverse that and we're going to multiply it by three. Um, what else have we got? We've got the C3H8 here. It's on the right hand side. C3H8 here is on the left hand side and it's not in any of the other equations. So therefore, we're going to have to reverse this equation. And the third equation, H2 and a half O2, H2O. So what's of interest here is H2. We want H2 on the left hand side. We've got H2 on the left hand side. We've only got one of them though. And so therefore, we're going to have to multiply this by four in order to get the answer, okay? So um, let's then write those out because it's always a good idea uh, when you're doing these sorts of manipulations to keep track of everything. It's very, very, very easy to get lost uh, in these. So let's do each of these in turn. And so the first one we're going to reverse. So the first equation we will get uh, 3CO2 plus 4H2O and that is going to give us C3H8 plus 5O2. Okay, so there's our reversed one. Now, if we are reversing, then what do we do to the value of delta H? We've got to change the sign on delta H. Okay, so remember, any time that you reverse an equation, and there's only two things that you can do to equations. You can reverse them, or you can multiply them through by a constant value. Here, we're reversing this one. Delta H, in this case, now becomes 2220, positive 2220. Okay, when we reverse it like that. So let's get rid of the old one now so that we don't get confused. So that's gone. Second equation, nice and easy. All that we're doing is multiplying that by 4. Okay, so we multiply that by 4. A half multiplied by 4 is 2. And let's put 4H2O in here and put that back there. And then if we're multiplying by 4, if we're multiplying the equation by 4, then we multiply the value of delta H by 4 also, okay? And then finally, we've got our equation here. This is the most likely one to go wrong because we're doing two things to it. We are reversing and we're multiplying through by a constant as well. So reversing first, so we're going to get carbon uh, plus uh, O2 gas giving CO2 gas. And then we're going to be multiplying by three, so don't forget that. Three carbons, three O2s, three CO2s. Getting a bit messy here, folks, but um, hopefully you're getting the idea. So let's get rid of that one. And what have we done? We have reversed and we have multiplied through by three. So if we are reversing, then we change the sign. And if we're multiplying through by three, then we multiply that through by three as well. Okay, and that then should allow us quite simply to add everything up and get the correct answer. Before we do that, let's just make sure that we've done all the manipulations correctly, because if we have, then things will cancel out on both sides of the arrow and just leave us this equation. That's the whole point of that, okay? So what have we got? We've got three CO2s on the left, three CO2s on the right, gone. Uh, what else have we got? We've got four H2Os on the left, we've got four H2Os on the right, gone. Uh, what else have we got? We've got three carbons, which is what we want. We've got four H2s, which is also what we want. And we've got C3H8, which is what we want, but we've got some pesky O2s here as well. We've got five O2s on the right hand side, we've got two O2 on the left here, and you've got three O2 on the left here. 2 and 3 make 5, that means you've got a total of 5 O2s on the left, 5 O2s on the right, ta-da, we're all set. 3 carbons plus 4 H2s giving 1 C3 H8, which then means all that we have to do is add those guys up. And when we add them up, then the answer that we get is, quick mental calculation, he said, looking at his notes, minus... 100.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that is an example of a Hess's law calculation. 
And uh, Hess's law, in a nutshell, basically says, doesn't matter how you carry out a particular chemical reaction, the enthalpy change for it is always going to be the same. Okay, so you can carry out a particular chemical reaction in one step, five steps, ten steps, doesn't matter, as long as the starting uh, system and the final system are the same, it doesn't matter how you get from that final, uh, from the initial to the final system, okay? So, Hess's law extremely useful and is a consequence of enthalpy being a state function, okay? And remember, a state function, basically the same thing. A state function is a value of is a function whose value doesn't depend on how you get from the initial to the final state. It only depends on the nature of the initial and the final states. So as I say, very, very common type of uh, calculation problem there involving Hess's law. And um, hopefully you've learned a little bit about it. Um, good practice is to find as many of these as you can on the net or in textbooks or whatever and go through and get practice with manipulating equations. And you know, once you've done a few of these, it becomes a lot easier. Okay, that's enough for today. Um, and we will see you in the next video.